Hello everyone, it's Happy Time Zones. It's your bird, Haven the Raven, and welcome back to Elden Ring's DLC. Oh. Hey, Elry! How are you? Just fine. Well, I suppose it's morning for you. Well, for us both, actually, but... How's your fine morning? Or, how are you this fine morning? I can't words, apparently. Alright, so... Hmm. Uh, mine's going well. Thank you for asking. Alright, let's use the elevator. So I did wind up looking up how to get down here. And apparently it is from within the keep something to do with the painting room, which I remember where that is. But I try not to find spoilers, but sometimes, like, when you, when you need assistance, it's unavoidable. And I probably would not have found this one. Alright, there's some vulgar militia over this way. There should be one more, I think. Oh, yeah. The game just wasn't targeting it for some reason. Alright, so if it has something to do with this- or with the room with the painting in it... Uh, nothing specific. What I'm going after is getting the rest of the map because this is literally the only map fragment I have left to get. I'm going to assume this. Wow, that is such an obvious hidden wall or fake wall. How did I miss that? Yeah, that is the one fragment of map that I'm missing, and it is so annoying not to have it. <laughs> ah, coffin. That's not possible. It is impossible to open up the entire map without fighting boss without fighting a boss. You can open up the entire southern section, but Rolana guards the plateau when the entire northern half of the uh map and there's and the ancient dragon man guards the jagged peak entry point. Yeah, you could get the map for the plains area. And you can get this down here, or the map for this down here. But this over here... Uh, the Dragon's Pit Terminus, you enter it from Dragon's Pit. So you wouldn't be able to do that without beating that boss. Uh, the boss here at Castle Ensis unlocks 
this entire northern section. You're welcome. Yeah, I think your friend your friend was just messing with you. Um that's going to stand up. Or not. Oh my gosh, 60? I suppose if this is your first Souls game, that's not a big number. Actually, yeah. Have you ever played a Souls like? Because I know you haven't played Souls, but have you played Souls Likes? They're technically different. Bloodborne's a Souls. So this is your second Souls game. Bloodborne's good. I have some problems with the consumable system, but Bloodborne's good. Yeah, that was actually the first one I ever beat. Uh, the first Souls-like I beat was... Code Vein, and the first Souls I beat was Bloodborne. Well, hey, if you liked Bloodborne, Elden Ring should be something you enjoy once you actually once you get into the flow of it. Uh, just be careful, there's a lot more weird BS with tracking and stuff in this. Elden Ring is definitely a gorgeous game. I'm surprised I haven't been jumped by a boss yet. Hey, one man's trash is another's treasure. That's how the saying goes. Though it should be one person's trash is another's treasure. Hmm. I feel kind of bad for Melania, honestly. There's no way of knowing if her actions were ever truly her own, or if... she was blinded by, uh... a charm that Mikkel had put on her. Yeah. And the worst part is, I'm fairly certain that even after
I don't think that even after you beat the DLC, there'll be a way to circumvent Melania's uh, fight. I think that she's just gonna... <laughs> Keep trying to defeat us. Which is, it, it's a real shame, honestly, because that means that she's just too far gone, either in the rot or in the charm, depending. She's definitely strong. Okay, so I think I got everything from over here. And even if I didn't, I don't particularly want to deal with the thing throwing fireballs at me. <laughs> Fair enough. Everybody's... got something or another that they like about a boss. Her model is definitely gorgeous. Oh, wait. Not really an important thing, but a thing. That I'm gonna have to come from around. You are going to die a lot to Melania, I'm just gonna say it. to a gank, I suppose. <laughs> I just got swarmed. But no matter. In modern Souls games, you just respawn at whatever you last touched. Fair enough. Learning attacks and movements is definitely a good thing. That's a good mindset to have under most circumstances. I'm going to pretend I don't see that ringed thing. I don't like those. Dang, I think you've actually spent more time on Bloodborne than I have. I think I've got like one to two hundred hours total in that game. Alright, so this supposedly will eventually spit me out here. While that is a good mindset to have, Elray, there is also a mental health aspect of 
sometimes it is better to just quit or even just come back later. Okay, good. <laughs> ah! You! This catacombs should spit me out where I want to go. It's just a matter of getting there. You know what? I appreciate the light source. Though I would really like to know what contraption Lands Between has that uh, brings light. Or, well, the Realm of Shadow. I love to mix it up in these games. I like to be able to wade into combat and melee or fight with magic from a distance. Stake of America here. Be wary of right. Ha ha! Because there's certain bosses in certain areas that are easier with a melee weapon. But magic can be helpful. Yeah. Put, putting distance between yourself and your opponent is huge in certain cases. Especially if they're the type that just lore walks. Uh, do you know what lore walking is? Because there's a few bosses that are chronic lore walkers. <laughs> Basically, a lore walk is... You know how some enemies will chase you like this? As fast as they can to keep up with you? Lorewalkers do this. Just slow, steady walk like they've got no place else to be. Y 
It can be intimidating. It can definitely be intimidating, but that's pretty much all it is. There's a few chronic lore walkers in the Soul series. And then there's other bosses that'll just leap across the entire field just to throw hands. See, Melania is actually the weird one here because she'll lore walk sometimes. And then other times... She'll just waterfowl to close the distance. You never really know what you're going to get with Melania. That's part of what makes her difficult. Well, other bosses, and not even just in Elden Ring, but in Souls in general, have certain attacks that you can bait out with certain actions. Melania is almost impossible to bait. You can pretty much guarantee that she'll either lore walk or waterfowl if you get far enough away from her. But beyond that, there really isn't a hard and fast rule. Okay, so I'm just going to have to hurry. Yeah, distance definitely helps with her. Uh, I think Burn of Flame is a good one, too. Oh, shoot. What's over here? I don't care too much about the loot at the moment. Yet another stake of America. Aha! Boss fight!
He <laughs> said I'm not doing nothing. What? Okay, he's going to be an issue. Like the outfit, though. Alright, so Ronnie's Dark Moon is actually a good play here, provided I can time it right. The issue is the amount of damage that the summons do. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh... That was four, right? Let me see if he's actually easier in melee range. Alright, so he teleports. Ow. 
now. Where'd you go? That was actually pretty close. That was close. Pretty sure that was five, so I'm gonna summon. Rudd. I got caught on a tree. There was nothing I could do about that. There was literally nothing I could do about that one.
And you might be done here. Okay. Barbed Staff Spear, huh? Sta Great Staff of Jory, Elder Inquisitor. The tip bristles with golden barbs, symbolic of the Inquisition's torture, allowing one to wield the staff as a great spear. Attacks deal holy damage and potency increases with faith. Huh. Here we go. And I'm officially... What? Frightened. What exactly is here? That has torrent so... What could possibly have Torrent afraid to the point where he can't be summoned? Just in case I perish here, let's put that on. If only I had a friend. That looks like frenzy. First off, morning. Matting hand? Gloves stitched together from the flayed skin of the victims of a butcherous bloodbath. Afflicts target with madness. Raises attack power when madness is triggered in the vicinity. Forged of an unyielding black impulse towards revenge fostered in those who were hunted down as heretics by their own brethren. These are the weapons of the utterly downtrodden. Eerie, but okay. Ah, uh, lover. Edge, oh, edge. Madness rats. Winter lantern f fly. Or winter, or is it winter lantern fly? 
Either way, rather bizarre. Is that a castle? No, it's a church. Map abyss. A thick forest sprawls out at the depths of the ravine that is untouched even by sunlight. Known as a sanctum of the sage Midra, and is a region forbidden by the horn scent. Concerning? Untouched by sunlight, yet Grace seems to have no problem find being found here. Two scattered- wait, what? I have three, so I can upgrade my scattered tree blessing again. Frenzy flame perfume bottle. Hang on, now I have to see, cause like, they keep saying perfume bottle as... Okay, that's actually cool. I'll head back down here in a second, but first, let's sell some stuff because I'm not comfortable lo with the possibility of losing this many runes. Okay. Hey, Kale. It's only Tom. Let's say. Ah, wonderful. He's bored. Uh. Oh, wait, Winter Lantern Fly. Winged insects carrying a dangling frenzied flame grape. Material used for crafting items. Said to be the heralds of the aging untouchable. On seeing these, the wise know to stay well clear of that place. Fair enough. Let's just sell my arrows. Crafting materials. These I can find everywhere, but they're not that expensive. Huh. Light pink mushroom resembling a wizened finger. Material used for crafting items, used by those who wish to become, who wish to become fingers. Hold up. So were fingers people once?
Horn suffused with spirituality, material used for crafting items. The Crucible has a particularly strong influence on the beasts of the Realm of Shadow, causing many to grow horns despite the characteristics of their species. Interesting. Regular Herba, go away, I'll sell you. I'm not gonna sell those because I'm not sure I can find more. I know exactly where to find the finger mim finger mimics. Sell the gray violet. You know what? I'm never gonna use these. Twenty thousand more. Quickest way to get that is over here with the Zamor ruins. up here Thank you, Tish. Take out you. Well then. And that's actually enough.
head down here. And let's pick up a level and then back to the Realm of Shadow with me. Okay, so the woods are pretty empty, actually. So I'm probably not going to need torrents in order to explore down here. Or well, in order to run away from an enemy that might be that might be down here. I have yellow. Yeah, this place is definitely touched by madness. It's no wonder that an Inquisitor guarded the place. Or, well, that an Elder Inquisitor guarded the place. What the? Okay, I saw the madness in the water, but seeped into the very rocks of this place? Is this where the Three Fingers first came into the world or something? With the finger mimics thing were the, were the fingers once people get back here if the fingers were human once how did they turn into the fingers. What the fingers were prior to becoming fingers might have to do with their size. Which would actually explain why Ronnie's two fingers were so much bigger than any of the other two fingers we can find around the map. So would hers have been a troll or a giant once? And if the fingers were people, how did they become fingers? Can't help but wonder if this Midra that got mentioned has been turned into fingers himself or herself so bizarre Or 
perhaps if they aren't fingers already, we might wind up turning them into them. The DLC has two main themes. Love and sacrifice. It wouldn't be that much of a stretch to say that people only become fingers after they perish. Or I could be reading too much into the item description of a mushroom. That's always a possibility. But Torrent being afraid is a big deal, actually. This implied... Is Torrent afraid of madness? Specifically. It would make sense, I suppose. Except for the fact that he's a spirit. Spectral Steed. He only really exists in proximity to the player. So wait, are there finger ruins in here? No. I'm gonna have to look at the map I got yesterday before uh, quitting. Because finger ruins, I'm doing that side quest too. Or actually there might be some in the ruins of Rach. Doesn't look like it though. You know, maddened or no, I like the ob the ambience of this place. Oh, that's a skull. I thought that was a mushroom. The place is filled with mostly rats, but there's a few inquisitors, too. Be wary of introspection. Item here. Likely high spot. And I think I've been duped. Oh well. Hmm. 
This place is surprisingly complex. Will this even reach? The Frenzied Flame is a weird outer god. Honestly. Or actually, no. No, it's actually not as weird as... It's actually not weird. The Greater Will would be the weird outer god. Because it's the one that sanctions Empyreans. Or creates Empyreans or whatever. Empyreans can only exist as Empyreans because of the greater will. However, every other outer god seeks to have a lord of their own making take the marital hand of an Empyrean. At least, at least that's what I can gather. The exception to this would be the Dark Moon that just doesn't seem to care one iota. Be wary of madness. Hide yourself, make no sound. Whoa, what? Alright, I'm just gonna keep running. And we thought the Winter Lanterns couldn't get worse. These things don't even have health bars. What? Can't say I was expecting that. Crouch in the undergrowth. Parry requiring talisman ahead.
So this is a stealth mission. When he turns around, I'm putting this back up. But... Shoot. Good to know that those... are my worst enemy. Is there anything up here? Spells that encourage stealth are proving to be quite handy. Alright, so I missed a talisman, apparently. But I can't particularly bring myself to care. At least, not that much. But who decided that making those things immune to damage was intelligent? Or, well, fair? I'd like to have a few words about that. Or perhaps they only take damage from, uh, crits. Also possible. And still quite cruel, though. Oh, hi, Slumped. How are you today? Gosh. 
having fun? I'm... In shock? Just a bit? Because... From Software made a very, uh... Evil... Stretch of road there? Other than that, I'm good. Alright, I was over there. Yeah, they decided to take the Winter Lanterns and then make them unable to be harmed. Oh, come on, another one. Crud. Ah, uh, not good. Not good at all. Creep along the edge here. Crud! <sighs> the Winter Lanterns? Yeah. That's what I said. They took the Winter Lanterns and then made them immune to damage. Yeah, you heard that right. I, uh, tried fighting these things. They don't even have a health bar. Your only option is stealth. Yeah, I I'm not a big fan of that particular design choice either. If I wanted to play a horror game, I'd, I don't know, play a horror game? Uh, 
but oh my gosh. Aside from that, this place is pretty cool. But the upgraded winter lanterns are unfair and unappreciated. I don't see that thing. And so long as I don't go down there, it doesn't see me. I'll just be up here with things I can actually defend myself against. Is getting friendly killers in Dead by Daylight a good or a bad thing? Or is it one of those it depends things? Aw, oh, that's cute. On the one hand, that is really cute. On the other hand... Isn't the point to... Isn't the point of being a killer to kill? I'm probably overthinking it. At the end of the day, the point of all games is to have fun. I don't imagine you would be. I mean... Free points. I'm going back this way. What you doing, my guy? Oh, great, there's two of them. You don't see me. I don't exist. You can turn away now. But see, that thing doesn't even have a health bar.
You don't see me, you don't see me. Pass me, please. Um, those bells there, by the way, make it so that those things immediately run to your location. Okay, sheep. Sheep means safe. Ish. Grace! Grace definitely means safe! Oh my gosh, those stealth sections. They're not that bad, all things considered. But oh my gosh, those stealth sections. Alright, so... I'm assuming I go up. Let's head over here. What did I just get maddened by? What just caused my madness meter to start building up? I mean, I could head over here. Up that way. Mad Craftsman's Cookbook. Alright, guess I am heading up that way. Because I have absolutely no clue where I'm going. Actually, I guess I can check for it more down here. What's the name of this? Divided Falls. Okay. Why are they divided is the question. Edge, oh edge. Hi! Only fair enough. Huh. Still no item. Hidden path ahead. Nope. <sighs> What's up here? Because I've got two routes I can go up from here from. Ow!
Bye bye rat. I would still very much like to know why rats of all things have the rune arcs. Anything at all over here? No. Let's head back over this way. Okay, so nothing except going back down, which might not be the smartest move considering there's frenzy lanterns right there. Okay, back to the Divided Falls. Likely light. Interesting. Let's head up here. Ignore the rats. They're leaving. Oh! Everything seems to be po That looks like it's trying to get us to go that way. Can I survive the drop or am I going to have to... Actually, wait. Pretty sure I have the long tail cat talisman somewhere. Yeah, that cave is suspicious. Very suspicious. if it's a cave at all. It looked like a cave. Huh. Okay, these things have health bars. Still going to sneak, though. Because on the off chance there is one of those lantern things, 
I'd rather not alert them. Doesn't look like there is one. Okay. Handy. I have absolutely no idea where I am now. Aside from Abyssal Woods. Do do do. Hmm. Cookbook. Looking at... Okay, that's that way. That's where I perished. This place is freaky. I'm just not going to look at how many runes I have. Because I know that if I do... I'll get paranoid about losing them. And there's enough to be paranoid about in this place without worrying about that. Castle and then revenge. Oh, hey, there is something there. Okay, those are regular enemies. There's probably a cave that leads here, rather than just the falling down the cliff path. But... I'm not taking chances. I don't have to be as careful sneaking here, sin sneaking here since those aren't the Winter Lantern things. But... I'd still rather not get into an immediate fight.
grace, that is such a good thing to see. I must warn. Huh. Okay. I'm going to examine the courtyard a bit for or the front place a bit first. Sw swollen grape. An eyeball of the frenzied flame that has swollen from within. Material used for crafting items. Marked with the fingerprint burns, proof of having been touched directly by the three fingers embrace. Okay. So... If Midra was the one talking to us, warning us away. Huh. Is he a three fingers on the cusp of turning into one, or was he directly touched by them? All of those are frightening notions, truth be told. But he might have a quest for us. Or if he doesn't, putting him out of his misery would be the kind thing to do. I really don't care. There really isn't a way out from here, is there? Just fast travel. Oh, I guess you could scale a cliff. But still... Midra must have really wanted to sequester himself away. There'd better not be any of those stupid lantern guys in here. Torn Dirty Page. I'll read that in a bit. I touched him, but only once. 
When he thrust his staff in my face, I brushed it aside. It was then that I touched him, the aging untouchable. Huh. The aging untouchable. Weird. Okay, princess, why did you run? Deceased? Note to yourself, next time just sneak by. Why is it always up, huh? One moment. Alright, sorry about that. Had to investigate a strange knocking. This appears to be the only way I can go. Um, it wasn't. It was some guy... Okay, if a raven knocks on my door, the raven's getting let in. I'm sorry. I don't know what I just did. Oh yeah, I love crows too. Beautiful birds. And very intelligent, too. <sighs> I beg you, stop. Haven't I taken enough? We are not, are we not brethren common in our line? And yet, you offer only cruelty. What crime did Great Mitra commit? Okay. Odd, but okay. Surging frenzied flame. Spirits are eternal, and yet frenzied flame melts them away regardless. No wonder the horn scent forbids a flame's use. Okay, that explains why Torrent was af is afraid of this place. That looks like the way I have to go, so this is the way I'm going for now. Oh, actually? Grace. Grace. 
Grace is always good. Even if what comes after the grace might be problematic. So I got some stuff out of that. <sighs> that almost went poorly. <laughs> of course, I can always fast travel back up to this grace. so I can climb down that ladder or I can go across the rafter. Actually, that might be just to get back up if you fall. Okay. I can take you out from a distance. And you apparently can't do anything about it. I'll face you normally or somewhat normally there's not much else in this room aside from the little guys on the floor I already took care of the big ones. That leads back to the main hall, doesn't it? Yes, it does.
could be handy, but first I'd like to investigate the rest of this room. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's a way up. That looks like it moves. It probably doesn't, but that looks like it moves. Honestly, if I have to go back through this room over here anyway, the grace up above is actually the better grace. Oh! I was right. Fair enough. There's two hickories or two pathways. Let's figure out which one. Huh. Nanaya's torch. Torch made by attaching a dying flame of frenzy to a small spinal column. In a distant land, in, age, in an age long past, was born a man who failed to become the Lord of Frenzied Flame. All that remains of him is cradled gently by Nanaya. Huh. Just how many Lords of Frenzied Flame have there been? Even the failed ones. Ooh, revered spirit ash. Nice. Oh, this is just okay. Where did you come from? I know you weren't there before I moved the bookcase. I came over here. Why did I already know that there was going to be something over here? More than just the one enemy they were showing me. Oh hey, another grace. And a summoning pool. That's concerning. That is very concerning, and I think I've already been down there. Yeah, I'm gonna go rest at that. That's almost definitely a boss. 
So we're going to be putting Midra out of his misery, huh? Fair enough. I should probably switch to this, though. Okay. This guy was clearly going through it. Oh! Deceptively so. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> He's slow until he decides to move. Alright, so that's one. My guy, I am trying to help you. Do you mind just trading projectiles? That was two. B 
because of how slow and fluid his animations are, it looks... It's deceptive. Especially after the klutz of his first phase. Okay, that was three. Let's check out my loadout here. And then I'm going to want the fire damage negation boost.
All right, so that was four. Oh, I know. And one of these days, I will drive myself up the wall facing this guy. But for now, if I can't beat him in this attempt here, I will be, uh, resorting to Tish. I should probably switch my flask ratio. I just thought about that. That was a dumb mistake on my part. Such a foolish mistake. Flasks, allocate. That should be good. Grab my runes. His first phase is a joke. That has a limit. Focus on Tish for a second, thank you. Oh, shoot. Whoa! You're done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could have gotten him within, like, one or two more attempts without Tish. But... At 
Oh well. Lord, remember, remembrance of the Lord of Frenzied Flame. As the golden barbs inflicted eternal agony upon him, Midra held fast to Nanaya's entreaty. Endure. The word was a curse. Well, I don't exactly have a high opinion of this Nanaya right now. Considering the fact that she brought... She appears to have been the one to have brought... The Frenzied Flame... ...to this place to begin with. Okay, so it doesn't seem like there's anything- any way to get back into this area down here. Let's head to the Table of Lost Grace, check out what you can get from Midra's Remembrance. And go from there. Midra's Flame of Frenzy and Great Sword of Damnation. Golden great sword that once pierced the body of Midra, master of the name, uh, master of the manse. Used by the horn scent in the execution of a damnation like no other. The barbs that pierced the victim from within wind gently around the blade. What the heck? Incantation in praise of Midra, Lord of Frenzied Flame. Summon an apparition of the Lord's head to spew frenzied flame. This incantation can be used while in motion. The apparition will remain for as long as the input is held. Lord of frenzied flame shall take their torment, despair, their affliction. Every sin, every curse, all melted away. Yet Midra, like others before him, was too weak to become a lord. Well, that's effed up. Uh, hmm. Alright, so let's look at my map. It would be under info. Mirage, Red Old, Wizard Map, Cross. Oh, that, that's the one that shows the one underneath Emir's own... That's the Finger Ruins of Emir. How do I get down there? You're sitting- the guy's literally sitting on the throne! Would you move? Oh yes, this evening. This evening. Do you recall what I said? That Manica and the fingers that guided her were unsound from the start. Well, the truth lies deeper still. It is their mother who is damaged and unhinged. The fingers are but unripe children. Victims in their own right. We all need a mother, do we not? A new mother. A true mother who will not give birth to further malady. Ha. Huh. May you join the glimmering stars above. Sounds a lot like you're wishing me to die. No. Okay, so what if I wait till nightfall then?
Okay, so at nightfall, this guy goes... Yep. Alright, so at night time is when I can get here. Or get this. I get the feeling that I'm about to face him. Or that I'm about to see some fingers rise from the earth. Snake? Didn't expect fingers, visions of snake. I already defeated the swordsman down here. Or, not swordsman, but the woman that invades you. <laughs> I activated the summoning pool and the stake of America. Or, well, and there's a stake of America here. Which is concerning. <laughs> What am I about to face off against? Ah, so I was right. There is a finger boss. Shoot, I messed up. I forgot to switch my talismans. Probably a good thing I perished there, honestly. Can't say I, ex I knew I was going to be fighting a finger boss once, uh some of the things that guy was saying filtered through my brain. But I can't say that I was expecting Mother of Fingers. This is attempt two. Why is it always tarnished? D dog Stupid finger scorpion. This is three.
Okay, then. She might take me a while. All right, then. One more time, I think. And then I'm actually going to head back up to the church and talk to these ones up, or the people up there. Because it seems really strange that of all the places I wouldn't be able to summon the swordsman, it would be here. Oh, hi Ellie, thank you for the lurk. Like, she was available for summon all the way up until this point, pretty much. What? Where'd she go? And where's Count Emir? Why are they both gone? What? That is so strange. <laughs> what? Is there a way to tell what time it is? Oh, what's down here? Finger Weaver's cookbook, okay. Alright, so the f they're being a mother of fingers. So she's the one that birthed the ones in the round table hold and Ronnie's and all the others.
But to say the statement of become fingers would imply that they're he uh, they were made from people. So was she or does she eat them and create pe create the fingers from the people she's eaten? Kind of like the land octopi? This is so strange. Okay, so she... We'll just open her body up and create finger creepers. Ah! I was actually pretty close, too. Shame. Such a shame.
What I am going to do, though... <sighs> do I really... Actually, no, better not. I don't know if I'll be able to find more. on. Not cool. She's brutal, and not for the reasons you'd expect, really. Uh, let's... I actually don't know what sort of... damage she deals, so let's do... Pearl Drake. And take that off so I keep my light load for now. Alright, so it'll show up here. Use my rune arc. Summon Tish.
Okay, did I get her? Nice. Okay. Okay. That... Oh my gosh, just that. I don't even know if the Pearl Drake Talisman helped. But oh my gosh. Let's look at this. Uh, the mother of all two fingers and finger creepers was in return was in turn a magnificently gleaming daughter of the great will and the first shooting star to fall upon the lands between. Okay. Let's head back to the table of lost grace. I'm going to use the remembrance to see what I can get from it. And then head back to the uh place there. Ooh, staff. Staff of the Great Beyond. Staff fashioned from the top or from the tail fingers of Metter, the mother of fingers, and the microcosm raised a uh, raised aloft over the crust crux they form. Catalyst for casting both source Oh shoot, this is a hybrid catalyst. The mother received signs from the greater will f from the beyond of the microcosm. Despite being broken and abandoned, she kept waiting for another message to come. Grazing er, gazing finger, colossal weapon. The head of Metter, the finger mother, wielded as a weapon without modification. From within the center of the fingerprint that wrinkles the creature's foremost protrusion, a tiny wart-like eye gazes vacantly into the beyond. Well, now I have to go upgrade this staff. And I'll have to compare it to see if it's better than what I've got already. Strengthen... Ranged Weapons Catalyst. This is a somber weapon. My sorcery scaling goes down. Though not by much. And can I actually cast incantations from this? Let's go... Uh... Here, there's no enemies over here to check. Alright, so let's sort chest, grab all of my incantations from here, man I really did put a lot of things away. <laughs> Memorize spell, uh, magic glint blade. And because I'm- I just want to check, let's do lightning spear. Yeah. Okay, that is actually- That opens up so much for me. I should have gotten the staff sooner. Alright, so let's do... Stars of Ruin. Then... 
Fire Serpent can be good for corralling. Uh, then... That's actually really good. And then let's do a f hmm. That's physical damage. Physical damage is definitely a good thing. All right, let's let, hold up. Okay, and that doesn't even take that much. Um, hmm. Ronnie's Dark Moon's coming in way too handy for me to just neglect it. Hmm. Actually, Black Flames is a good idea. Or... Hmm. Arcane... F yeah, no. The reason for Lightning Spear is because of how fast it is. Which is really handy when you stop and think about it. And then Loretta's Great Bow for the distance. Yeah, I should have gotten that sooner. Okay, seriously, where... Did these two go? Because is a little cr on the crazy side, actually. Why would Ymir abandon his spot? Oh! Another, uh, ah! Remembrance thing. I'll save that for later. Wait, what? Why is this side of the church covered in these guys? That is so strange, actually. I'll have to read the description of Glinting Nail in a bit here. But where did Count Amir and the Night Maiden go? Uh, 
The lampreys that guard the finger remains resemble fingers far more than they do humans. And so the finger weavers imitated their sorcery. Okay. Why isn't Count Amir here anymore? You'd think that he'd want to know about the Mother of Fingers having been mercilessly What have you done? You've wounded Count Emir most irreparably such that he wishes for your death. Why? My guy. Okay then. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what just happened. Cherishing fingers. Yuri, beloved child taken before his time. Finger sorcery of Count Emir, aspiring mother of fingers. Surrounds the caster with a mesh of hefty fingers that wards all manner of projectiles, whether magical or physical in nature, away from the caster. Charging enhances potency. The dear fingers look after their mother, or perhaps it is merely what a mother wishes to believe. Soft and well tailored, soft and well tailored. Golden embroidery decorates the purple cloth with a jeweled ruff that sparkles like a flower with dew. Circular design at the top represents the greater will and its lightless abyss, imparting increased intelligence and arcane to the, we to the wearer. Though Count Emir instructed Rolana in the sorceress arts, he abandoned his allegiance to the moon. It was merely the closest of celestial bodies, nothing more. Sorcery of Count Emir, who made himself a mother of fingers. Carries, carried for want of tail fingers of his own, enhances finger sorceries. The crystal ball, though representative of a mi microcosm, would not receive any sign. Okay, so this is only sorcery. And it requires arcane. I have so many questions. Rest here, and then... <sighs> oh, she's still here. Count Emir, the stars, the sky. I see them not. Uh, 
I... Hmm. Okay, which one should I do here? You know what, I'll give her the grace. Okay, uh... Spirit of... S S sword Hand of Night Yolan. Spirit of a sword hand granted by... Granted light by the Iris of Grace. Wields a sword of bottomless black that penetrates the enemy's guard. Though it was not by the shining star that she had longed for, thus was her night illuminated. But it was... But this was an at times blinding light and threatened to expunge the night entirely. I feel bad for her. Emir. Emir used her. There's no two ways about it. Anything further down here? Well, there will be no new fingers. Though I am very curious as to how we managed to take out the mother of fingers without a finger slayer blade. Is that a retcon or does or did she not she, did she simply not abide by the rules that you would expect fingers to. <laughs> huh. Well, either way... I've only got... I I've explored everywhere now. Oh, actually, wait. Let's go back to Tellier. I'm going to keep coming back to Tellier until his dialogue changes or he disappears. Because there's something not right about this. Okay. Go back here, and then I'm actually gonna call it. For today, at least. If you are interested in anything I have done up until this point, please check out my YouTube channel. Nightbot's been putting it in the chat, and it's also linked on my Twitch, ba Twitch page. If you're interested in chatting off stream, I do have a Discord. Night Court Nightbot has been putting that in the chat as well, and there is that is also linked in my Twitch. If you've made it this far and are interested in seeing where I go from here, why not drop a follow? It takes but one button press, and you can always change your mind if you find my content isn't for you. And if you think that or if you know someone who you think would enjoy my content, I'd appreciate a recommendation. Not by any means mandatory, but none of this is. I am raiding Ellie, so stay tuned for that. That said, happy time zones, everyone, and I hope you all have an excellent day.